Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Luna. I hope you enjoy your time here and if you do, please subscribe, like, comment, share with all your witchy friends because we have a great time here. And okay, I can't, I can't continue without saying thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers, you guys. Holy shit. I... I like knew it was coming because like I obviously look at my channel, but it just like whew, it meant a lot to me, you guys. So I'm I'm so 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 thankful for you guys and that you guys like me and support me and trust me and you know help me continue. <laughs> so I just wanted to first thank you guys for that and um couple of quick you know little housekeeping things um. New goal, end of April, 10 Patreons. Can we do it? Can we do it? If you're over here and you like the stuff I'm doing and you wanna support me and help this be my full-time job, which fingers crossed, manifesting. If you are able to, I have three different tiers on Patreon and we do tons of really cool stuff. I go live on there once a month and just kind of sit there and talk with you and do a Q and A. Um, and you guys can ask me things. I do a monthly tarot reading. My top tier gets a full moon ritual with me. Um, there's like exclusive content, tons of awesome things um, for those of you if you are able to. No worries if you're not, I totally understand we're in a pandemic and money is hard. So, okay, cool, that's all. Let's get started. <laughs> so guys, it's Aries energy. And is that why I'm talking so fast? Is it because my Mercury is an Aries? Probably. I am so much Aries. I have an Aries stellium in my 12th house, you guys. Shadow work this month. So we are, we're in Aries season. This is the first season in the new zodiac cycle. Okay, new year of the zodiac, new astrology year, starting off fresh in Aries. This is, um, okay, I'm going to go into, I guess first let's talk about, um, you know, why it's important to hone into this Aries season, feel the feelings of Aries, and um, a little bit of like how to find where Aries is in your birth chart to figure out what themes might come up this month and what um, what ways you can kind of lean more into the Aries energy where it'll be comfortable, some ways that it might not be so comfortable. Um, yeah, let's jump into that. So like I said with my last video, I did a video on Pisces season, which is still relevant if you have Pisces in your chart or if something is transiting Pisces in your chart, it's always a good idea to check that out, see how you can kind of lean into that energy. Um, like I said there, it's just so important when signs, when um, planets are transiting into signs that we allow that energy to flow freely and to kind of accept it and to think about how you can like lean into it even more. Um, and so with Aries season approaching, I guess we're already in Aries season. Um, just so you guys know, Aries season is March 20th through April, April 19th. So we are in Aries season until April 19th. Then we will move into Taurus season, which will be a whole other video. So like I said, it's just really important, I think, to those energies are going to flow into your life regardless. And I think if you're aware of it and um, accepting it and embracing it, it's a lot more harmonious. And I think you can do a lot more healing. April is the month of healing um, and just work with it better. And also that kind of gives you a chance to get to know yourself and get to know your natal chart even more. So my next step for you guys is to pull up your chart. I highly recommend astro.com um, and you can see what planets have Aries in them? Okay, so if you have your sun, your Mercury, whatever, um, take note of which planets those are because those will be themes that come up. For example, my, my stellium, I have an Aries sun, Mercury, Mars, and Saturn. So we're having lots of, I mean, first of all, solar return. So lots of, you know, themes of the self, mixing with communication, mixing with power, mixing with, um, stability in that masculine energy, which I'm not going to go into it, but my healing spread yesterday was all about the masculine energy and healing. So I am definitely already seeing um, my themes very loudly. And also take a look at where Aries sits in your chart. If you have no planets in Aries, you still have Aries influence, okay? So look at your chart um, one of your 12 houses will include Aries, okay? For example, mine is in the 12th house. So, 
<laughs> these are shadow work times for me, right? These are going into like the deep shadow self, looking into the unknown, like the subconscious, like the mysterious, um, all that fun stuff. <laughs> and another step you can do, a little bit deeper in, so hold on, hold on tight. You can look at what um, sign rules your Mars because Aries rules Mars, okay? So it's important to look at what sign and what house is ruling your Mars and see how that correlates with the sign and um, house of Aries in your chart. Look at those aspects. I know it's like a little bit deeper into astrology than like most people I would assume are, but um, if you are wanting to just kind of deep dive a bit more, learn a bit, that's a step that you can take. So let's talk a bit about Aries, kind of like what are the themes of Aries? What does Aries represent? What kind of like energies might be coming through? So to start, Aries is a fire sign and they are a cardinal modality, which means they are very headstrong. They are very, very, you know, go, go, go. Let's do this. Let's get started. Like I'm not sitting back. I'm ready to adventure, right? And um, obviously with the fire sign, very passionate, very fiery. Um, those two together, that is just like such a combo, having being the cardinal fire, it's just a lot of energy. That's probably why Aries are known for talking very fast, for being a bit impulsive, doing crazy shit. <laughs> and I totally feel that with my Aries and Mercury, my communication. Um, I am always talking so fast and yeah, I hope you guys are keeping up. <laughs> Aries also is the ruler of the first house. Like I said before, Aries is starting a new astrological cycle. So they're the first house. So this is the house of the self, you know, beginnings, you know, who you are. This is the house that your ascendant starts. So think about that. There might be themes coming up of, you know, the self and like, like who you are and your belonging. You know what I mean? And this is also with that just a good time. And we'll get into this a bit more in a second, but a good time to start those projects, start something new, you know, take a big leap, you know, be a bit more impulsive than you might usually be because a lot of times, you know, this is the time to do it. We're starting spring, you know, it's a new cycle for nature, for astrology, you know, it's time to, to do something new and get things started. And the glyph for Aries is the ram, which is very noticeable. <laughs> if you know an Aries, they're very headstrong, very stubborn, very similar to Taurus, the bull, um, but a bit more like aggressive. <laughs> and Aries is also ruled by the god Aries. So fun fact, lots of that Mars energy, obviously Aries is ruled by Mars. So that passion, that power, that sexual energy, um, lots of masculine um, aggression <laughs> in this like sign. So that's just something to keep in mind. Kind of, you know, is that something you need to heal in yourself? Is that something you need to embrace? Is this something you need to start activating your power within? You know, just things to think about. And again, depending on where um, Aries is in your chart and signs in your chart overall, um, it'll definitely be individual to you, but these tips will help you so much in finding out like what's a great way to heal this month. Another fun thing, if you want to get into the colors of Aries, we're going to think of Mars. So we're going to think of like reds, orange, some brown, some black. My favorite thing is obviously I'm wearing some red. I love to do like a red lipstick, a nice dark black wing liner. And we'll get into this in a second when we talk about glamour magic, but um, just like those very, very powerful, bright colors, even like a dark, like, like burgundy or like reddish purples, just very, very um, like sensual colors, but also powerful, if that makes sense. And thinking about, just something to think about, with your current plans, where you are in life, things that you might be pondering starting, think about last season, right? Pisces is the ruler of the 12th house, the ending of the cycle where you're going a lot more introverted, you're looking inward and you're thinking, you're, you're doing lots of reflection and lots of, you know, self-discovery being with yourself. So that time's ended. Okay, so now how can you take the things you learned in that like reflective time in Pisces season, how can you take those things and now put them into action and, you know, take some risks, take some calculated risks with them and, 
Airy season might make you want to go a little bit crazy, a little bit uh, too impulsive, so definitely keep an eye on that. Stay grounded if you can, especially if you're not used to the Aries energy and you're just like, hell yeah, let's do this. Just like take it with a grain of salt because Aries can be a whole lot, but it's, it's really beneficial a lot of the times and really wonderful. So if you can balance it, it's really, really good. Okay, let's jump into the fun stuff. So how can we bring this Aries energy that is being presented to us into our day-to-day -day life and use it to help heal, help just embrace and have a good time and celebrate this cycle? So my first idea for you guys, which is something I've touched on a bit, is to start that new project or journey or leap that you have been pondering, you've been thinking about, um, you know, something that maybe you've been holding off for a little bit and you've just been waiting for the right time. Well, now is the right time. Okay, this is exactly the time to jump into something new and to start something full of energy because Aries are great at starting things, starting new projects. Now they're all not always the best at carrying it through, but if you start a project here in Aries season when you have all this really wonderful um, like startup energy, we will be going into air, uh, to Taurus season soon, which is a very good grounded, hard worker, you know, thinking about money. So that'll help you sustain it. So just, just in this airy season, start some shit, do some great things, start something new you've been thinking about. If there's a new creative project, if there's, you know, a, something you've been pondering in Pisces season, a plan you've been thinking about, a new direction to take your life, this is exactly the time to do it. The next tip is something kind of fun, kind of just very chill. Um, and this is to work with the element of fire. And so my recommendation would be to have a bonfire with friends, you know, get together, have a good time, dance around the fire like witches in the 1600s, like have a good time. Um, you can also do some candle magic if that's something you're into. I personally have not explored candle magic so much, but I definitely I'm thinking about it a lot this this airy season, wondering if that's something I should get into. Um, so yeah, just just finding ways to connect with that element of fire, even just like having a barbecue. I mean, that's like that's very simple. That's very common around this time. And if you can just take a moment to be mindful and just be grateful to the element of fire for all that it does for us. I know that's super hippy dippy, you guys, but alas, that's who I am. Another really, really great thing you can do this season is to meditate with crystals or to carry crystals that amplify or protect Aries energy. This will help you to kind of harness that energy a bit better and keep it like, keep it as a reminder um, and maybe a bit of a motivator. So some good crystals for that are carnelian, which is just like a really good all around Aries crystal. Um, lots of like Aries energy, you know, that fieriness, but that new beginnings too, and like that starting up, but also it helps to protect that as well. So if you are starting a new project or um, jumping into something, Carnelian might be something really fun to just kind of hold on to um, and keep with you as a reminder. Another really, really great crystal is Hematite or Black Tourmaline. Two different crystals, but both have very similar properties and are really, really wonderful for protection and grounding. And Aries needs a lot of grounding, you guys, okay? Take it from an Aries stellium, please. Aries needs so much grounding, okay? So, um, you know, it helps with protection. So I always, you know, meditate or do my tarot with a black tourmaline crystal with me because I just know that I need some extra grounding power. But um, it's just a really good, like, all-around crystal to have if you guys are starting your crystal collection. I 100% recommend one of the two, both very easy to find too. And the last crystal I'll talk about is adventuring. And this kind of helps you bring up that prosperous energy and, and you know yield the fruits of your labor. And it also just with that green energy kind of helps you to ground a bit more. Um, not so much in the same sense of black tourmaline, but more in the sense of um, being one with the earth and feeling content. My next tip for you guys from an Aries. <laughs> is to scream sing or dance or just have a party time to some Aries music. And like I did for Pisces season, I created a Spotify playlist with all the Aries energy. And I'm very proud of it. And I definitely, it's Aries approved. I love it. And here's the thing, you guys. Aries are natural communicators and they need to have that throat chakra activated constantly. And it's just so important. I think you'll feel, I've definitely felt my throat chakra 
like yelling. Even as so much Aries, I'm just feeling that activation and knowing that I have, I need to, I need to sing. I need to do something with my voice. I need to, you know, and Aries are kind of known for like screaming all the time, being loud. And that's totally true too. But that'd be a weird tip if I told you just to scream. If you want to go for it, because like, I think it's, I think it's beneficial. I genuinely think people don't uh, scream enough and I don't think it's socially acceptable to scream as much as it should be. Anyway, so I made this playlist for you guys. Lots of Aries energy. Have a dance party in your kitchen. You know, scream, sing it when you're alone or when you're with friends or in the car and just like let that energy flow. Um, also, I always think that's a good way to release tension. Um, I know when I get upset, I always want to scream so much. And so I think that's a common Aries thing with, again, with the throat chakra. I think that if you're feeling lots of this Aries tension, go ahead and let that out with some good music. Another tip, um, Aries are very, very physical creatures, okay, with the Mars. Um, so they love physical activity. And if you're not super into physical activity, that's fine. Just like do your own kind of things. Like if you can just get out in, in nature and hike for a bit, um, that's totally fine. But if you are more into that like endurance type of sports, you can totally do some crazy shit, guys. Like I don't know, cause I'm not a super um, like sportsy person, but like, I don't know, do some extreme sports, go play basketball. I don't know, do something like with your body and um, getting that heart racing. Cause that's a very, very um, like strong Aries energy thing. And that's another way to release that tension. So um, obviously like level that to what you enjoy. Don't do anything that you don't want to do. Um, but if you can, even just going for a walk out in nature is really, really great. And we'll kind of bring up that physical embodiment of the Aries energy. Next, I already kind of touched on this, but this is my little glamour magic section for this area season. Like I said, personally, my go-to is to wear bold colors, a little bit sexy, you know, off the shoulder, stuff like that. Um, things that make you feel powerful and confident and, and good. Um, and so that's just what that is for me. With makeup, I am always going for a red lip, a nice thick wing, some fake lashes, a good contour, you know, that bold makeup look. And um, for some reason, like black leather pants just feel very Aries to me. Um, so again, it's kind of just like whatever you're vibing with, whatever it feels right for you. Um, but the main kind of note to hit with Aries glamour magic is that sense of independent confidence and power. Like you don't need anybody. Like this is the ultimate like hot girl summer <laughs> like type of energy. Um, like you don't need anybody. You're you know, confident by yourself, you're independent, you're doing your own thing. And, um, this sense of like not needing recognition from others, um, and just wearing what you want to wear and what makes you feel powerful and confident. And my last little tip is to try something outside of your comfort zone or to take a calculated slash good risk. I am not telling you guys to do some crazy shit, but I am saying that, you know, taking a leap of faith in yourself or, um, you know, trying something. If you're not an artist, just trying some art. Or if you're, you know, not a physical person trying a new sport, just going outside of that comfort zone with confidence. Okay. I say outside of your comfort zone, but obviously don't do anything that you're genuinely uncomfortable with, but something that you just maybe have not been super confident enough to do, but have wanted to do. So, um, so yeah, you know, it's all about that confidence and that self power and that independence. Those are the key words for Aries. So that's my final tip for you guys. Let's now ponder that, I guess, ponder that for a second, write down the ones you want to do and let's go do like I did last time. We're going to do a little three card Oracle poll to see what spirit wants us to know as a collective for the Aries season, um, what things specifically we should heal, um, and kind of where our mindset should be. So come with me. Okay, you guys, let's see what our Zend out, this is my Zend out um, ritual deck. Let's see, what does the collective need to hear this Aries season? What do we need to heal? And where should our energy be? Ooh, nice. I love 
getting the moon cards. Okay, okay. So we've got the dark moon, rest, success, oh, sorry, stillness, observation. Okay, so we're taking that reflection, that rest from Pisces season. Um, it looks like we're probably still gonna need some of that kind of inward thinking, a little bit of um, a time to be, a time to like really be, like find yourself and become one with yourself. I know that's like sounds so hippie, but you know what I mean? Like a chance to really make it clear like what you want out of this life. Then you have the crown chakra, bliss, communion, impermanence. So that higher self, you guys. So having, totally, so I totally am saying this. This is like the need, I'm always saying like a need to meditate, you guys. Go fucking meditate, please. That's always, and even for my cards too, I'm always getting that. Because this red card is totally resembling like Aries in general, right? The strength, passion, intensity. Red is the color of Aries you know, fire is the element of Aries. So this is definitely representing that Aries energy. And it looks like to fully, fully get into that, we're gonna need to have this stillness and this rest to get to our higher self. I was already talking about the higher self over here, but I feel like the crown chakra really just kind of, you know, reiterates that, that we need, to, that we really need to be able to communicate with our higher self, our spirit guides, figure out what the heck we wanna fucking do with our life. And you know where we're to go from here. So if you're still feeling like, and maybe you've already done this work, because we're already about halfway through Aries season. So if you've already done this this work, then I'd say like totally go for you know whatever you're trying to go for. But if you're feeling still a bit unstable or a bit um, like you don't really know what the best route is, or you still don't feel confident knowing what to do, definitely take this time to meditate and to you know, talk to your spirit guides, talk to whoever you talk to and get in tune with yourself. Cause at the end of the day, like, you know, tarot readers, like Oracle readers can tell you, you know, everything you need to know. But at the end of the day, like all the secrets of your self and of your mind are within you. And you just need to get the tools to be able to access them. So I'm here to tell you to meditate so that you can create space for listening. And then you know, your higher self will lead you in the direction towards, you know, this Aries energy, the, you know, the great Aries energy. So yeah, that's our reading guys. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. That concludes our Aries season energy video. I hope this video helped you so much with um, getting into that Aries energy and really just enjoying this season. Aries energy and I'm totally biased. I'm not even going to pretend I'm not biased, but it is some of the best energy out there. It is so exciting. It's starting a new project. It's believing in yourself. It's having confidence. It's being a badass bitch, which is what I'm all about. So I hope you guys feel empowered and are ready to go out and, you know, do your own thing and be an Aries person. I don't know where I was going with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please comment, please subscribe and share it with all your friends. Feel free to join me on my Patreon or watch my podcast. I guess listen to my podcast. Do a new video every Friday and yeah, I'll be here. Love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye.